Welcome back, and we're back to inspecting hives at Newport for today's video. But I want to uh, talk to you about an uh, invader in our hives that uh, we're going to find in this hive on the very first frame that comes out. If you see if you can spot him, I'm just about to. And it is the wax moth grub. Here he is in all his glory. And so you might detect a, a little tone to my voice as I talk about the wax moth because I have mixed feelings about it. Not very mixed, I mostly hate them. If you're anything like me, you may just be experiencing a small degree of scepticism about today's topic. When I first heard about the wax moth, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that there could possibly be a creature that eats wax. I thought that they might be some kind of elaborate joke, a made-up creature like if you visit Australia and find people warning you about drop bears or hoop snakes, uh, something that older beekeepers tell younger beekeepers about as a joke. But Mr. Waxmoth is real, he's very real. We know all about Mr. Waxmoth now. And uh, this is because he's a real pain for a beekeeper. Now, as we look here, we're looking at some nice, clean, new honeycomb. You can see that mostly that is the wax foundation sheet, that area that the bees are on with being newly drawn wax. So they have added the wax there to that foundation and uh, it's nice and clean and uh, that butter yellow color looks really nice. If you've watched a few of our videos you've probably noticed that not all honeycomb is this color. As Kate draws out the next frame there you'll probably notice that it was quite a lot darker. The next one that I'll be put holding up will be much the same and that darkness comes from uh, the process of bees raising their young so they lay the eggs in the cells of the honeycomb and then those eggs hatch out and the grubs that the bees feed uh, and then they they pupate they form a chrysalis much in the same way that a caterpillar does on its way to becoming a butterfly and when it hatches out it leaves quite a lot of that pupa case in the hexagon and progressive generations of this tend to make the honeycomb darker and darker and it's actually the old pupa husks that seem to be the thing that a growing wax moth needs and he will eat through your wax to get to that but in the normal course of things not while the bees are active so in the center of the hive here look there's the queen right in the middle in the center of the hive here the wax moth would stand no chance if, if a wax moth tried to get in there right now while there's a good number of bees about the bees would actually kill it and they would cart him off and we, we see that every now and again. I haven't managed to catch it on film yet but it is a fairly regular occurrence that we'll see a wax moth getting stung and then carted off by the bees and chucked out. But you will find them sometimes at the edge of the, the hive where the bees aren't, aren't so numerous and you'll really get them if you ever try to store honeycomb. And so we quite often store honeycomb, we try and store it indoors over the winter uh, particularly super frames where the honey that we, we harvest comes out and we try and store those because uh, we can put them back on straight away the next year and the bees are able to fill those with honey without having to spend any time creating wax and drawing it out some more. And if you don't hermetically seal it, and we've learned this the hard way, the wax moths will come in and lay their eggs and then you'll get a thousand more wax moths in your house and then they will be in every room of your house, particularly the bedroom, because they like to follow the light as you switch the lights out, and they are just a nightmare. So this is very much the source of our antipathy towards them. Uh, annoyance at bedtime, and also eating our wax, and wax is quite the valuable commodity to it. But in the wild, the wax moth is an amazing creature. A wild colony of honeybees, perhaps in a, in a hollow tree trunk, will eventually fill that space. They'll fill that space up with, with honeycomb. And as they progress, their honeycomb will become darker and less usable. The uh, pupa husks in particular in the brood comb, making the internal diameter of the hexagons smaller and smaller with each generation until they, they can't be used. And uh, the bees will then 
swarm out and find, have to find a new home after a few years of, of mm. inhabiting that place. And that is when the wax moths will move in and clean that place completely out. They'll eat through all of the old wax and uh, leave it nice and empty, ready for a new swarm to come in. And that new swarm starts the whole cycle again. There's even evidence, uh, some studies are indicating, that wax moths have uh, antimicrobial properties in what they do and that they protect uh, the new swarm coming in from potential diseases that the spores might have been left by the previous colony. And so I have to, I have to remind myself to not hate them absolutely. They're, they're a pain because they get in the way of our human activities. But in the wild, they're an extraordinary uh, example of the, the harmony that some species are able to live together in. And the wax moth is vital to the wild bee. So I hope that you found that interesting today. It's a, a little different uh, topic of discussion. And uh, if you have, do please give the video a like. It really does make a big difference to us. And feel free to ask any questions in the comments. And uh, thank you very much for watching.